Okay, you expect you asked me about my experience at the wound care clinic. I uh, started working at the wound care clinic of my medical school uh, as soon as I graduated. What happened was uh, I had written a book when I was in medical school, and I became a quasi celebrity. And I uh, negotiated an internship where I could get special exposure to the complications of diabetes because I knew how to treat blood sugars, but I did not know anything about the long-term complications except those that I had, and I had mostly reversed by then. So I didn't know how to treat foot foot ulcers and uh, kidney disease and things like that. And I got special rotations in addition to having to work on the wards and whatnot and in the the emergency room. So one of the rotations was with, at my request, with the world's authority on the diabetic foot, who was Heinz I. Lippmann, who came from northern Germany, uh, left Germany the day that Hitler came into power. And... uh, He was doing research on cockroach metabolism uh, as a postdoc, and he went to the hospital that day at 6.30 in the morning, opened all the cockroach cages, and took the train for Italy. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) He had, he, um, uh, in Germany, they had portable electrocardiograph machines, and he ended up with the only portable electrocardiograph in Italy and became uh, a uh, famous cardiologist, uh, but rapidly had to leave Italy with his new wife uh, for Paris and then for the USA, where he did another residency um, in um, surgery, I believe. And uh, he ended up uh, being the protege of a very famous specialist in peripheral vascular disease. And uh, he worked at uh, Montefiore Hospital and uh, became, over time, the world's authority on the diabetic foot. And he was conscripted by the head of rehab medicine at Einstein when the, uh, when the um, medical school was founded to move to Einstein. He had to do another residency in rehab medicine in order to get that position. And he uh, founded his own clinic, which, was, uh, which he called the Peripheral Vascular Disease Clinic, but was really the wound care clinic. So knowing about this fabulous guy, I uh, asked to spend a month with him during my internship. And what I learned in the month was that uh, you can't learn in a month how to treat diabetic foot ulcers. So as soon as I finished my training, I spent a day a week in his clinic and I ended up uh, eventually running the clinic. And I was in that clinic for 27 years, uh, trained residents, saw thousands of patients, treated and cleaned on my knees, uh, thousands and thousands of wounds. Um, And I learned one thing that was extremely important. I, from the very beginning, interviewed every new patient that came to clinic. Uh, because I wanted to learn. So I'd write the initial history on every new patient. And we would receive diabetic patients who had lost one leg or one toe and wanted us to take care of the other foot. And I would always ask them, what preceded your amputation? And in 100% of the cases, it was someone trying to remove a callus, either by 
rubbing it with uh, a pumice stone or by taking a scalpel. It was uh, uh, the number one culprit were the um, podiatrists, uh, mostly in the hospital. Uh, number two culprit was family members or the patient themselves. And with the family members and patients, it was usually a pumice stone. Uh, I, I never saw an amputation for, yes, we had, I saw one patient who lost a limb because of a motor vehicle accident, but all the rest were, uh, attempts to remove calluses. Um, I tried to get this published, finally did get it published yet, uh, and, uh, the year after publication, the American Diabetes Association removed their guidelines instructing uh, physicians to remove calluses. Uh, the, their instruction was all calluses should be removed by a professional with a sharp instrument. And for a year or two, they removed that direction but then after two years, there were new members of the committee that wrote foot care guidelines and they put those instructions back in. So to this day, the bulk of the hundreds of thousands of amputations that we have per year are caused by people trying to remove calluses. Uh, the ADA uh, in their patient publications actually advertises machines for uh, removing calluses, uh, uh, motorized machines that grind down calluses, oh and of course, uh, cause infections and then amputations. That's the way the world runs nowadays.